Hey folks, let's get right to it. We're doing a simple leather book video. I'm just getting, taking some 8.5 by 11 pages and folding them to make my leaves for the book. I'm going to do five of them and each one has five pages. Then I'm just going to quickly figure out the size of my cover, make my edges straight. And then eyeball how much overlap I want for the cover to the pages. Now I'm just giving a, a, another quick eyeball for the width of the pages when they're all in the book cover itself. And then I'll square everything up and cut the last two sides of my cover out. I'm just matching both sides so I can draw a line. There's the spine of my book. Now remember, that's not where your pages are going. They're going to go inside that line. That's where the fold is for your cover. Graph paper is great for figuring out your holes for your pages. There are three stitches that I run through all five sets of pages. And so I'm marking ten holes at the top, ten holes at the bottom, ten holes in the middle. And that's where I'll run my stitches. So this is just making our pattern that'll help us put the pattern on the cover and the pattern on the pages. Just punch all your holes. And then what we're going to do is transfer one line of those holes to the pages and then all of those holes to the cover pattern. I use a ruler just to make sure my holes don't waver a little bit. Sometimes you are you think you're punching in a straight line and it really isn't at all. So I'm just using one of these rows down the spine, or well, down the center fold of the uh, pages. And we've got to match it up. We throw some holes in them, and we throw some holes in all five of them. This style of book is really pretty simple to do. I was looking on YouTube and it seems like there's a lot of more intimidating books if, at first glance. So I figured if somebody wanted to make a book for the first time, this would be a great way of doing it. It's got minimal tools and it doesn't seem very intimidating. So and it looks pretty cool too in the end. All right, now I'm just eyeballing it because that's what I do. Throwing the uh, holes onto my cover. Now we'll punch all these, and then that'll be our completed cover pattern. The leather I used here was, I think it was 7 ounce Vegetan. You can use a little thinner if you want. Now I'm beveling only one side of this because I'm going to put some other leather on the back side to make uh, smooth inner covers. But you don't necessarily have to do that, so if you're not going to do the leather on the inside, then just bevel both sides. All right, folks, once you've got uh, this piece done, then all you need to do is carve it, and uh, it'll be great. This will be in another video. Now I'm setting up my lines for my V-gouge, which is the device that'll cut lines into the cover and make it so the pages, well, the cover folds easier. So I've just copied them from my pattern and draw some lines, and we'll get the V-gouge to work here. Pretty simple. It's got a groove. It's adjustable. 
be careful with it. You could just go right through your entire piece of leather and ruin your cover really quickly. So take it easy, feel it out, check it often, and make sure you're not going all the way through. Especially after you've carved it like I've carved it, that would that would really suck. Just occasionally fold it, see how your cover's doing, until you're happy with it. Obviously, again, be careful. Now I'm prepping my inside cover. I recommend making it bigger than I have here. Make it big enough so that it's got some overlap when you glue it down, and then when you cut it away, it'll be a nice crisp edge instead of trying to guess your way along. You can see I've made it a little bigger at the bottom here, but that's not really enough. Just like the main cover, you want to make sure you're only beveling one side of these, so when you glue it together, there's no obvious separation between the inside cover parts and the outside cover. I like Pro Dye, it dyes nice and even. We just want right now to get a base color on it that's hopefully fairly light. I've decided to use my Angelus dye pens to color the knotwork that I carved, and because of this, the whole image is going to end up a little darker than it would if you were to use an acrylic paint. I'm not really worried about being messy because I'm going to use a stain to fix it all up in the end. If you really want your design to pop, use acrylic paint, and then apply a resist, and then use some antique finish. I'm going to probably do a video like that shortly. But for this one, I wanted it more dark and aged looking. What's going to end up happening here is I'm going to apply a finish to this that will act as a resist so that we can put our antique on it. Now, because I've used dye to color it, that resist is going to permeate a little bit and darken everything. Now if I had used paint here, everything would probably be a little brighter. I've used Satellite before, it works great. I'd never used Angela's matte finish before, so I decided to try it. And it worked out alright. I love my spray gun, by the way. If you, uh, if you have an air compressor, grab a spray gun. So you can see everything is going to darken up here. Then I'm just going to add a gel antique and wipe it away and it's going to make everything pop a lot better. I think I would have liked for it to have a little more contrast, but I'm pretty happy with it. Now just for continuity, we've got to do the same technique to the journal inner cover. So put a resist finish on it and then put an antique stain on it to get the same color. You could apply a finish over this. I never have. It's never really been a problem. But if you are going to apply a finish over it, you probably have to spray it on no matter what. Like, if you wipe it on, it's pretty smeary. Super 77. Use a gas mask. This tape was perfect. Fit exactly along. Now remember that you've cut gouges in so your cover folds. When you glue your inner cover on, you can't have it covering that gouge, because when you fold it up, it's going to be on the inside and it'll block it from folding all the way. So make sure it's just a little bit outside that gouge. You'll see where I place it here. So you can still see the gouge. It's the easiest way of describing it. There we go. Flatten it down. Cut away your excess. 
and then just do a little final hammer to make sure everything's seated pretty good. Quite often I will machine stitch the edges of these books, but I've decided to just see how it'll hold up without stitching it. We also need to hit the edge with some dye again as well. So after we've hammered it down, hit the edge with some dye, we're going to apply some beeswax to the edge of the book and burnish the edge. Oh, and first we gotta wipe away a little excess dye, yeah. A little beeswax. It'll help smooth out the edge with my burnisher. Now I'm just showing you the burnisher that most people will have, something like this. And you grind away at the edge and it'll smooth it up with some friction and time. But I prefer just to use this, which is a lot easier. So that's it, the cover's done. Now it's time to meticulously stitch pages into your book. A few things here. Make sure that you're not pulling too hard and make sure your holes are lined up pretty well because if they're not, you're gonna get tearing in your pages. So whenever you've done a stitch, snug it down, but don't reef on it because you may tear the pages. There's a few different patterns you can do to make these fancier, but this one's pretty straightforward. It's just kind of an X pattern when I'm done. going down through the center, up through the center, down through the center, and back. Oh, and the thread I've been using is some wax thread from Tandy. This is some of the lighter wax thread that I've, as far as wax quantity goes, some of the lighter stuff I've used, and it's, I like it more than the heavily waxed thread. I'm not sure how to describe which thread it is, though. It's uh, been sitting in my box for a while. And blunt needles. You don't need to jab through anything. Now the one thing that I don't end up doing on this book is any kind of closure or wrap around the book. Uh, you can experiment with different things. A lot of people will stitch a half inch, three quarter inch wide strip of leather into the spine, and then it just wraps around the book and closes it. Sure, there's lots of options you can find with a quick Google search online. But sometimes you don't even need a closure. Definitely, if I had done a wrap on this book, it would certainly cover up the pretty knot work I put on it. So, you gotta make a decision on what's more important to you. Now, since we're working on the pages right now, it's a good time to remind people that you should definitely have clean hands when you do this. Mine are mostly clean here, and I didn't transfer much to the pages. I'm glad I finally got around to doing this video, because I've been talking about it for way too long. Oh, one more stitch to go through the book. And another camera angle, because I keep experimenting with how I'm going to do things. If only I could stitch that fast in real life. Well, that's about it. Uh, hopefully I can get more videos out to you guys in the future. I've been slacking a little bit. This book itself I'm gonna throw up on my Etsy shop and see if anybody wants to buy it. Thanks for watching.